I'm Shay Russell for mining.com.au and joining me today is Peter Lester, the non-exec chair for Aurora Energy Metals. Pete, good to see you again. Good to see you too, Shay. Now, I want to touch on some of the great news that came out for the company on Wednesday. Now, you released an interim scoping study about a month ago, but you released the full scoping study this week. Uh, tell me what's changed in a month. In a month, um, a lot. Um, this, scope, this is the full scoping study, so it's got everything that you need to know at scoping study level in it. The key things are the um, recommended flow sheet, which hadn't been completed last time, and the full financial analysis, which is everything that all the analysts want to see. Um, and what it does do because of those things, it enunciates a feasible pathway to the uh, eventual development of what we believe is the largest measured indicated uranium resource in the US, which can be mined, meaning it's permittable. Um, and just to reiterate those sizes, uh, the project, the feasibility study, the uh, scoping study, sorry, has uh, said that we can produce 1.15 million pounds, which is a lot of uh, uranium per annum over 11 years to what uh, I think all the pundits are saying is an increasingly hungry US power system. We have a 50 million pound resource sitting underneath that 1 million pounds a year. So um, we've got a lot to back up on. Um, on the financials, uh, we've reduced NPVs, IRRs, all those things that analysts really want to see and hopefully the market wants to see. But just interestingly, the numbers are sound enough to warrant going further with this project. Uh, they're all positive. Uh, they're all high enough that um, there's uh, meat on the bone here. But an interesting thing is that back in January, the uranium price hit 105 US dollars a pound. It's about 90, 91 at the moment, uh, which is the base case for our study. But 105 US dollars a pound, which we have seen recently, the pre-tax NPV would jump from the 151 that we've put in the report uh, to over 260 million at that price. And I, I hasten to add, it's a price we've seen recently. And there are pundits pushing high. Now that's Australian 400 million. So it's a pretty robust project. Um, Post-tax, we use pre-tax numbers because the US tax system is uh, a bit alien to us. And so we're using um, uh, the basic tax system as it is in the US uh, with no credits or anything like that that we could get for building a big project. If you want to do a post-tax number, it's uh, on that 105, it's $280 million Australian uh, MPV, which is a sizable number. So this sounds like there's some pretty solid project economics from here. Where's the upside going to? Good question. Um, there is upside. That's, the, that's probably the most <laughs> important thing to say. Um, Firstly, uh, there are two ones I want to focus on. Uh, one is in the project economics, because um, uh, it'd be nice to get those numbers higher. Now, a project, like, well, any project that pulls dirt out of the ground essentially has uh, three elements that go to the bottom line on, the, um, uh, on your economics. That's grade, which we can't change. The grade is what it is now. Uh, it's the uranium price. We can't change that. It, it, it will be what it will be. But the other thing is recovery. And all of those things have exactly the same impact um, on the bottom line. And there are charts in our presentations that show the sensitivities. So we can influence the recovery. Now, we've done a lot of test work uh, going into this uh, scoping study. Historically, there's been a mountain of test work. This project goes right back to the 80s. And there's been test work, not quite continuously, but um, lots of test work both here and in the US over that time. What we've done is produced recoveries, both in the past test work and our very recent test work, which is still finalising, by the way, that suggests that there is um, uh, potential to have recoveries somewhat higher than the 69% we've used. Given what I've said, which is that that recovery goes straight to the bottom line, um, we can run numbers. The trouble with, is that you need enough test results to confidently be able to put them in the public domain. And that's under the rules of studies and the ASX rules. Not quite there yet with these high numbers. So um, that could come out as an optimised scoping study somewhere in um, the rest of the year. But to give you an example, 
And there are numbers in our presentation uh, that can be calculated. So I'm not telling you anything that can't be worked out by an analyst. A 5% increase in recovery, and we believe that's uh, possible, would could add 50 million US to that pre-tax number I said before, just a 5% increase in recovery. And we're only at 69. So we're on a baseline, not a below baseline, we believe. So that's the recovery story. So there's definitely upside on that. There certainly sounds like it. Uh, now, just for context for everybody listening, there's been a lot yep. of talk in the US around uranium. Uh, what's happening and how does this impact uh, the Aurora Uranium Project? Shay, that is the other side, um, not the flip side. That's the other <laughs> angle for the, uh, for the upside. And it's the macro side. It's what's happening in the US. Um, there are tailwinds on the, on the uranium price. Uh, strong tailwinds. And we've seen those with that 105 that we saw back in uh, January, and we're still sitting there at 90 bucks and it doesn't seem to want to go lower. I hope I haven't put the mocker on it. <laughs> because of that, um, the US is, is clearly the place to be. And the uh, Clean Energy Act, uh, which the US uh, enacted some time ago, has been a catalyst for all of this. There are two things really in the Clean Energy Act in the US. One is uranium for power. They are the largest power consumer of nuclear energy in the world by a long shot. 93 reactors sitting around the US at the moment producing power. Um, the other one is uh, the stuff that goes into batteries, lithium. So they're the two things that the Clean Energy Act will really impact in accelerating uh, the development of new projects. The thing that impacts us most is the one that uh, President Biden announced some time ago, but put into legislation last week which is the ban on um, Russian imports, which is currently is running about 12% of the uranium um, requirement in the US. From the 1st of January, 2028, everyone's reporting 2028. It's not, it's the 1st of January, 2028. That's the end of 2027, if you want to say it that way. And that means that's three and a half years away. So that tailwind I'm talking about in the macro uranium space is only going to get stronger. The other thing that came out with that um, with that act on uh, banning the Russian imports is that the legislation said that uh, within 90 days of it passing, which is 90 days from last week, um, anyone who wants to import uh, enriched uranium for power utilities from the from Russia needs to get a special waiver. Now, the waiver will be granted on the basis that the US doesn't produce any domestic uranium at the moment. It's all imported. So there will be waivers. There's no doubt of that. But it just means you've got to go through a process to get a waiver until three and a half years' time. That's just going to put another boost behind that tailwind, uh, in my view. Uh, the other importer in the US is Kazakhstan, the biggest one. <clears throat> They're having massive supply problems with acid and their uranium as most uranium uh, production facilities need they need a lot of acid and the kazakhs aren't getting it so their imports will go down russia will go down that takes out about 37 percent of the u.s uh, requirement that's an awful lot of domestic supply that has to come in and that's more than they've actually got including us so when you add all that up uh, we are extremely confident that um, we will be part of that um, um, tailwind, that push for significantly more domestic um, supply. Now, whether it's us or us as part of a, a bigger US system, um, time will tell. But we're confident that we're, we're going to be sitting there for the ride. We have to do a lot more work, of course. And we're hoping people will start to notice all of that. Now, Peter, it certainly does sound like there's significant upside for this project. But what is the key message for shareholders today? Shay, the key takeaway from uh, what I've just said is that Aurora Energy Metals is a seriously undervalued company at 15 million Australian dollars in the market. Given the project size, which is considerable, it's a tier one jurisdiction with bipartisan government support, no matter who gets in in uh, November. It'll go ahead. A clear commitment to nuclear power growth, massive growth, and the potential role that Aurora Energy Metals will play in this uh, scenario in the near future leading up to the end of 2027. Peter, they are some enviable economics. Thank you so much for being here today.
My pleasure, Shane. Anytime.